This could be the best high-speed rail in Europe if they only fixed these five things in the first-class service. Join me in Amsterdam as we travel at 300 kilometers an hour and explore the Thales Eurostar train. A little background about Thales while we make our way to the central station of Amsterdam. When using the Amsterdam Metro, you don't need to buy tickets in advance. You can just tap your credit card and the right amount will be deducted when you exit. The Thales system connects Amsterdam in the Netherlands, Brussels in Belgium, Paris in France and Cologne in Germany via a high-speed rail network. In 2022, Thales was acquired by Eurostar, who operate the high-speed trains through the Channel Tunnel to the United Kingdom. The Thales trains will be rebranded as Eurostar, but it's the same physical product. On this trip, I traveled from Amsterdam to Antwerp in Belgium in first class. The journey takes around 1 hour and 20 minutes. Prices for the Thales Eurostar service vary a lot and depend on the time of day and the class of service. I paid 90 euros for my ticket in the highest category of the first class product. This ticket is called premium. You can also book another product in the first class car that's called comfort. They both have the same 1 plus 2 style seating. The difference between premium and comfort is that premium comes with a meal and lounge access. The train also has a second class product called standard that comes in a 2 plus 2 seating configuration. I paid for this trip myself and I filmed without the permission of Eurostar and they weren't even aware that I was going to make a video. That way you get an authentic and non-sponsored travel review. Welcome to my channel, Marcus Travels. From the metro station here you can see the hotel where I stayed the night before. And I love these views of the canals even from a simple metro station like this. On board the train, this is what the route map is supposed to look like, not like this, where the LED lights remain, but the map overlay has disappeared. To exit the metro, once again I just tap my credit card. Welcome to Amsterdam Central train station, currently undergoing quite a lot of renovation it looks like. Let's go and find the NS International Lounge. The same system applies at the entry gates, which will give you access to the platforms at the station. But this caused one problem here in Amsterdam. I had my Thales ticket as a QR code on my phone. But when I showed my phone screen to the sensor, it also noticed that I have a saved credit card on my phone in Google Pay. And the system, in fact, wanted to charge that card. Luckily for me, though, the system doesn't accept American Express, and my Amex card was the only card I had saved in Google Pay. And therefore, it gave me an error saying try paying differently. In order to successfully scan the QR code, I had to switch off the NFC on my phone. So just be aware of this in case you have credit cards stored on your phone. At Amsterdam Central, I have access to the NS International Lounge. It's operated by a company called Regus and located next to track number one. Welcome to the Regus Express lounge here at Amsterdam Central Station. This has also some places been labeled as the NS International Lounge. Let's check it out. This lounge is very, very basic. There are a couple of badly designed working pods. You can see here that the table has cut up the armrest of the chair. There is a departure board some seating and some more workspaces. In the fridge, it very, very explicitly says one drink per person. This is unheard of in a proper business class lounge. There is also a coffee machine in here. Plus, there's a sign next to the glasses that says that those glasses are only for beer. The lounge has no food, but there is a nice convenience store just next door definitely one of the most disappointing lounges ever. My tip is don't waste your time in this sad lounge at Amsterdam Central. And that's the first thing out of five that Eurostar needs to fix in order to make this a more modern product. Other than the lounge, Amsterdam Central is actually a nice train station. Here's a typical Dutch thing. You can get hot snacks from these vending machines. There are lots of shops and food outlets here inside the ticket gates. 
I have acquired my mandatory Stroopwafels, a delicious Dutch treat. Now let's find a track for the Talis train to Antwerp. As we head to the train, on the sign we can see the Eurostar branding. But on this train that just arrived, it still has the old Talis branding. But on the departing train, which I'm about to board, we already see the new Eurostar livery. Most of the train is second class, and there is a cafe car in the middle. My premium class is in car number 11 today. And here you can see the 1 plus 2 seating layout. Welcome aboard the Eurostar Talus. That's going to take us from Amsterdam Central over to Antwerp Central Station today. I made myself comfortable here in coach number 11. This is seat number 44, which is a solo seat at the window. Let's test the seat padding like Super Alps Travels always does. Shout out to Super Alps and link to his channel in the description. There is a big comfortable pillow for your head. The backrest is pretty sturdy, it's actually kind of hard. And the bottom of the seat is well padded. This is a comfortable but not luxurious seat. The legroom looks pretty limited, and it is, but it actually did not bother me during the trip. The seat has movable armrests on both sides. Under the armrest there is also the switch for the overhead reading light. There is a small trash bin next to the window. In front of me I have a footrest as well as a tray table. This is actually a really sturdy table and it also comes with a brace which I believe is supposed to be used as a cup holder of sorts. There is a misaligned coat hook situation in this seat. In this clip you can see my coat actually placed one seat behind my seat. My seat is the one in the middle of this clip. There is a coat hook in front of my seat as well where the lady has hung her handbag. There are two coat hooks in this unit but it's certainly not obvious to her that one of them is maybe mine. Once the lady switched seats so that she could face the front instead, I tried the still misaligned coat hook and this is just not a great design. See how it protrudes to her side. What they should install is a coat hook in the ceiling like on other trains. Here you can see a pair of seats on the other side of the aisle. If you're getting value from the video, please hit the like button. Thank you for doing that. As we depart Amsterdam, I have a decent impression of the Thales service. This is obviously an older cabin layout and it does look a bit worn. But I hope that Eurostar will refresh it soon. One of the joys of riding in 300 kilometers an hour is that we're just zooming past all these cars and that really highlights the speed of the train. There are two intermediate stops on this trip. The first one is Amsterdam Airport, Schiphol, which I obviously cannot pronounce correctly. And the second one is Rotterdam, still in the Netherlands. When the meal service begins, the crew member asks everybody in the cabin, are you going to Brussels? Hello, hello. hello. I would love a meal, please. Okay, you're traveling to Brussels, sir? <laughs> to Antwerp. Okay, I've got a pasta with... I understand the reason was to weed out those people who are only going to Rotterdam because they would not be entitled to a meal. I wasn't going all the way to Brussels either, only to Antwerp. But I did get my meal. This is an entirely cold meal. The starter was some kind of puree. For the main course, I chose chicken. And the dessert is a speculoos flavored cake. For what it was, this meal was fine. But it does bring me to the second point that should be improved in this Thales service. This should be a hot meal going forward. When I pay 90 euros for a trip of 1 hour 20 minutes, I would definitely expect a hot meal as part of a competitive business class product. And let's just cover point number three as well relating to entertainment. There is supposed to be Wi-Fi on this train, even fast Wi-Fi, but it wasn't working. And that's pretty pathetic. It doesn't feel like a premium product when a simple thing like Wi-Fi is not functioning. Now let's check out the bathroom situation on board the Thales train. On the way to the bathroom, there's a big sign, still Talis branded. It's saying that this space is regularly cleaned. I'm not sure if I feel more or less safe that they have to point that out. And the space behind this door is just a vestibule. If I remember correctly, 
this was labeled as an accessible lavatory. For example, they do have these big sturdy handles to hold on to, but there is absolutely no way to get a wheelchair in here. The door doesn't even open fully. It opens to the inside and hits the toilet on the side. The quality of these lavatories is my point number four that Eurostar needs to improve. This just isn't a very modern lavatory experience, especially when they feel the need to put up a sign like this. It apologizes proactively for the cleanliness issues in this lavatory. But why don't you just fix the issues instead of putting up this sign? And looking at other videos, these signs have been here for months. There are plenty of places to store your luggage. You can use the space in the vestibules or these dedicated luggage racks on the ground. Plus, there are also the overhead shelves. My point number five that Eurostar needs to improve relates to the smoothness of the train ride. For the most part, it was soft and comfortable. But several times during the journey, at acceleration or braking, there was a violent lurch of some kind. It's difficult to capture on video because I use image stabilization on my cameras, but you can see it in effect here if you look at the surface of my coffee cup. It just randomly jerks around the whole train. Maybe this has to do with the age of the train, maybe it's a track issue. But I have never had this particular problem with any high-speed trains that I've tried in the past. Not on the TGV, not on the ICE, and definitely not on the Shinkansen. I'll give you my final recommendation in just a moment. If you've gotten massive value from the video, you can buy me a coffee with the link in the description or a super thanks right here on YouTube. Thank you very much for supporting this channel, Marcus Travels. As we arrive in Antwerp, which by the way is one of the most beautiful railway stations in all of Europe, what shall we make of the Eurostar Talus product? Clearly, this is a very comfortable way to travel from Amsterdam to Belgium. And when this train exists, it absolutely makes no sense to fly. Eurostar, as the new owner, now has the opportunity to improve the five points that I mentioned. And if they do, this will remain a very competitive product. Click or tap the screen right here for another classic train product in Europe, the EBB Night Jet. This journey did not go according to plan. So check out that video. And thank you very much for watching Marcus Travels, and I will see you in the next one.